Uh, we got to get to Dan Campbell here. Your boy biting kneecaps. Yeah, yeah, bit his own. Yeah, really. It's not the reason they lost that game, but he certainly didn't help. Yeah, I mean. And on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to just solely blame him, but man, that game's a lot different if he makes some different choices. Mm -hmm. I got. I kind of blame those receivers, man. They had some awful yeah. drops. Yep. There were a lot of things in that game, but let's let's. Like I said, it's it was a complete and total second half meltdown where uh, yeah and and i'm not overstating this there wasn't a single defensive player five possessions for the, the 49ers five scores not a single defensive player made a single play uh including one hitting off a guy's face mask that should have been a surefire interception wasn't uh and your offense didn't make a single play in that entire second half and your coaches didn't put you in a good spot because you made two decisions and all right let's just let's know. stick to dan campbell here right. just just right here and then sure. we'll talk about the rest of the game and all the other stuff yeah. later so because he's getting a lot of heat okay and and he he said after the game he was like I don't regret any of these decisions. We'll play that clip in a second. He pulled the Dan landing, but let's let's roll through him. Um, and he does do this. I mean, this is his this yes. is his mo. Yes. End of the half, he made the right decision. Yeah. Um, take the points. And that right? and, and that was close. They were they yeah. were they were on the what the five six yard line. They were on the three. On the three, because he he even said afterwards he goes he goes ah it was a little far. If we were a little closer, maybe I'd go for it. But I was like, you can't do this with the Niners getting the ball. Kick the field goal, yeah. go in, you're up by three scores, yeah. all the momentum going your way, and yeah. he did the right thing. He did the right thing there. Okay. So the first one of the second half was not a terrible decision. No. They were at uh, the San Francisco 28. They were up 24 to 10. Yep. And it was fourth and two. Mm -hmm. That is part and parcel with how Dan Campbell has operated. You're up 14. Boy, if you can get that first down and punch one in, you're up 21. Dude, you're sitting pretty... Um, that I don't have a problem with that one. No. And this, that's, it's a little bit, like I said, I'm going back to that Washington game with, with landing. I thought there was only one of landings. that was really egregious. I think there was only one of Campbell's. that was really egregious, you know, and, and that being said on, on third and two on fourth and two, when you're running the ball, I still would have liked to put that in someone else's hands, but he, they, they ran the right play. Reynolds was open. Yeah. Goff didn't make a perfect throw, but he hit him in the hands. Yeah, and he dropped it. Uh, that's that, big um, drop. That's that, that's your second best receiver uh, all year who had been very good for you. And I'm sorry, if, if you're a Super Bowl team, you can't drop that ball. You, you can't do it. That that should have been converted. And so I'm with you. It looks bad in hindsight, but if you're Dan Campbell, and this is what Lanning said too, he's like, look, we loved the look. We didn't execute it. And that wasn't even like one of those like, oh, you know, we didn't execute and that we, you know, it was, it was a poor throw or, you know, whatever. It, it, it hit him in the hands. Well, enter Dave Bartu's theory yeah. that when you get to fourth down, the pucker factor is something that people don't really account for. Yeah. In that little plays, easier plays like that, and it wasn't the easiest catch, but yes, he should have caught it. It's not a hard catch. Right, but when it's fourth down and everybody knows you have to make the catch, yep. it's funny how that, that one gets dropped. First down, second down, that probably doesn't, <laughs> right? I yeah. mean, that is a thing. Yes. Okay, so we don't have a problem with that decision. Okay, I, I would say on that one, the only thing there is if you trade points – it's not a bad idea because you're you're the one in control. The Niners had just kicked a field goal to start the second half, right? So it was 24-10. Just trade points. It puts you back up by three scores. Exactly. You're, you're up 17. You're the one ahead. Just take the three. That would have been conservative. That's not really Dan Campbell style. Won't kill him for that one. And this, if you need to make an aggressive decision later, you can still do that later. But you don't have to do it at it, that point. It was a little baffling to me sitting there after he had kicked it to go up by three scores at the end of the half to sit there and say, cause at that point it's like an 85% kick rate from where they were kicking. I'm like, dude, you just went up by three scores. You're going to go back up by three scores. Like you said, it just seven minutes left in the third. It just didn't make any, I, I, I love being aggressive. I love Dan Campbell. I didn't understand if you went with the logic of kicking the first field goal, why this one wasn't exactly the same, but well, All again, right. just fourth and two. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um. So that one we don't we don't kill him for. The second one of the second half was a terrible decision. Awful. And this one was indefensible in my opinion. They were ahead. Uh, they were down twenty seven twenty four. Yep. They were on the San Francisco thirty, and it was fourth and three. Mm -hmm. If you tie it there, no matter what. San Francisco does against your defense, which yep. by the way, your defense was not stopping them nope. at all. Nope. No matter what they do, 
yours, you stay within one score. Unbelievable. And he elected to go for it. And that's the one where they blew him up and Goff rolled out and missed. This is, a, and this is where I'll give uh, San Francisco credit and Wilkes, who's been maligned. And I get it. Their defense at times is, is a bit, uh, it can be a bit spotty, but they played great in the second half. Uh, they ran a man beater. They ran a little mesh combo, uh, crossing route and they sent the, I forget who it was. They, they, I think they sent St. Brown or, or someone, they sent him in motion and San Francisco, uh, the defender followed with it. So everything in their mind was this is man coverage. And what do you do against man coverage? You run two crossing routes and you know, whether that's a little rub or just the nature of the cross, one of those two guys is going to be open. So I give San Francisco credit that they looked at that and were like, we're going to present you one thing and we're going to give you another. So everything before that snap was man coverage, man coverage, man coverage. And Ben Johnson and Jared Goff both said, Hey, this is easy. We got a little routes and they ran them and San Francisco didn't San Francisco ran zone and they passed it off perfectly. And you could see Goff go to one option, two option. Oh crap. Here comes the blitz from my side. I'm screwed. I roll out. I'm not an athletic quarterback. And that's where he just kind of threw it up to St. Brown. That was in, in, in a, big moment. One, it was a dumb decision to go for it. Again, I think from that range, they said it was about an 82% chance of making that kick. 48 yarder. I, I, I just, the idea with like what, five and a half minutes left, the idea of, of not tying the game. I know. I just, I, I can't, I love Dan Campbell. I can't <laughs> process it, but I give San Francisco credit that in that moment, they outcoached Detroit in that big moment. They fooled the, a, a really, really good offense and a really, really good quarterback that doesn't get fooled very often. And it was a great scheme come up by San Francisco and they made the play. Another low key bad move by Campbell. And again, he's not the play caller. Yeah. So this, you know, but he's the head coach was running it on third and goal at the one yep. with 105 left. Yep. It's because you had to burn a timeout there because you ran it and didn't get it. I and know I get it. They were trying to catch him off guard, run it, it in. It forces you to, to kick on side. It changed everything. Yep. It, because if you are able to, if you just throw it, yep. and if you don't get it, you get another shot at it, fourth down, you save the timeout. Yep. And and then you can still run that run yes, play because if you don't get it, you're yes, giving it up anyways. Correct. So all that, I mean, that's a terrible decision. Yeah. You know, it's just all of this goes together. If you're only down seven instead of 10, you can tie the game. But being down 10, the way onside kicks, I mean, onside kicks are a joke anymore. They, like they you just, you do. don't get them. You don't get them. So they you just, have to have the timeouts. Those, you have de to. those decisions absolutely cost Detroit. I, I, I'll stop short of saying it cost him the game, but the head coach has got to get out of his own way. Yeah. It, you, it's just, it's, 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 I, I it's really inexcusable. I can't defend it. I love Dan Campbell and, and I, and I, I, I said it about landing. I'll say it now. You can't love aggressive coaches all year long for being big balls, you know, chip and then be mad when it doesn't work out. I'm fine. I'm, if you're going to be aggressive, that's fine. And I get analytics, but at some point, at some point, someone has to be smart. Someone, it can't be all gas, no break. At some point, someone has to pull you aside and be like, we're not doing this. So the first one, fine. You're going to be aggressive for some reason. Being up three scores isn't enough for you. But with five and some change, being down by three and a kicker that makes 80% of those kicks to sit there when your, your defense hasn't made a single stop all second half and your offense has no momentum whatsoever and you're going to sit there and, and, and go, f I, I just, I love him, but that is one of the worst, not the first two, that one right there, isolated. That is one of the worst coaching decisions you will ever see. I also thought they probably should have just kicked the field goal. At the, you know, at the end there. Yeah. That was like Baltimore. It's like, you know, you save some time and kick it. Cause you know, you're going to have yeah. to, you know, you got two scores anyway, but some yeah. of that was me having uh San Francisco minus six and a half. Understand. <laughs> but I, I, and I, and I get the thinking that, Hey, we're on, we're on the one. Yeah. It's easier to get the seven here. Sure. Uh, well, I, but I still think, you know, save time. Is, if you're at the 30, this is my thing. If you're at the 25 or 30 and there's two minutes left, I'm all for it. Hey, kick it and and save your timeouts and play. But when you're down inside the 10, I get it. Yeah, just go for but it. But that entire second half, as I mentioned, 
Not a single stop from your defense. Josh Reynolds with two of the worst drops you'll ever see. The one on fourth down is inexcusable. The one on third down was even worse. It hit him in the GD chest. Gibbs going the wrong way on a handoff and then trying to, even though he doesn't have the ball, continue to run into the, the line for some unknown reason. Vildor having the ball hit off his GD face mask and <laughs> bounce into, really? You're going to pull a Jose Canseco? You're going to have it bounce into his into his face? Jamison Williams, by the way, stopping on a route into the end zone and then picking back up and having to go right through his hands. No one's talking about that. It literally went through his hands. He looked up and saw it coming down after he had stopped the route. It went through. All he had to do was put his hands up, and that ball is caught. It, it's 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 just like there was just play after play after play with the Lions, where you just sat there and was like, "Can one person, if any one of those plays gets made, that's a different ball game." They didn't make a single play the entire second half. It's incredible.